Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here. My name is Andy Frisky. I am a senior dream curator here at Dream Bank. On behalf of the team, we are so, so thrilled to have you all with us. Um, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with Dream Bank, we'd love to take a few moments and share with you kind of the work that we do and what we are. So here at American Family Insurance, we believe that the communities are stronger and futures are brighter when people are actively pursuing their dreams. And that's why Dream Bank was created. It's a community and inspirational uh, destination point and digital experience that is dedicated oh. to dreamers everywhere. Our offerings are designed to help you celebrate the dream journey, overcome obstacles, and to stay motivated. As the presentation goes on today, I will drop some links in the chat where you can find uh, about some of more of our upcoming events, as well as uh, some of the recordings of, of previous events that we've put on there. So keep an eye in the chat for that. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and introduce our featured speaker today, Josh Clement. So Josh is a digital storyteller and strategist and the founder of Reverbal Communications. He helps brands of all shapes and sizes find, hone, and tell their stories online. He writes, teaches, trains, presents, and consults regularly on social media, digital marketing, and ways brands can reach, engage, and expand their audiences online. He also serves as the president of the board of Social Media Breakfast Madison and sits on the board of the Daily Cardinal and the marketing committee for the United Way of Dane County. He's also a Reed Award finalist and was selected by In Business Magazine as one of Madison's 40 under 40 finalists for their 2021 class. Um, He's also the host of Step Up Your Social, a podcast consisting of short episodes, 10 minutes or less, dedicated to quick, actionable tips to help brands take their digital marketing to the next level and uh, have a topic that you would like to hear covered, go ahead and reach out. He, uh, you can listen to all episodes on stepupyoursocial.com or stream anywhere you stream podcasts. And his motto is simple. You have a story, let's tell it. Without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Josh. Josh, take the win. Two things, y'all. One, I freaking love Dream Bank, so I really appreciate them hosting this. Two, my mom wrote that bio, so uh, <laughs> if you liked it, talk to, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, it's a long bio. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited to be talking to y'all. Um, love Dream Bank. Been uh, presenting to the fine folks at Dream Bank for many years, uh, both in person and uh, digitally, virtually. Um, and this is a topic I definitely love talking about. Um, Instagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, so, um, let me go ahead and hit play. Um, just a flag. I cannot see your questions. Um, so if you have any, um, drop them in and I will definitely answer them at the end. And Andy, if you see anything that, you know, I need to deal with during, feel free to stop me. Of course. You got um, let it. me know. Cool. But yeah, uh, definitely drop your questions as we go and I'll come back to them at the end if we don't cover them, you know, throughout the session. So um, yeah, today we're going to talk about 10 tricks and hacks to step up your Instagram. So first of all, let's just cover some very basics on um, Instagram. Uh, there's over a billion active monthly users, over 500 million daily average users. Instagram stories alone has over 500 million daily average users. Over 200 mil, uh, million businesses and organizations are on the platform. And according to Instagram's ad statistics, half of all users follow at least one brand on the platform. And of those 60% say they learn about a product or service on the platform, while 75% take action, such as visiting a website after looking at a post. Uh, so two simple questions for you. You take an advantage of this powerful platform. That's the first part. And if so, how are you breaking through the noise? Because it's a lot of noise. There's a whole lot of content out there that you have to break through. So let's start very simply by just defining my, my definition of what is social media. Social media is the world's largest coffee shop, bazaar, political debate, and bulletin board all rolled into one. So I always like to ask folks, well, if we were in person, I'd ask you to raise your hand. Since we're not, I'll just, uh, I'll just pretend you're raising your hand. So how many of y'all log on to any social channel, Instagram or otherwise, hoping that organizations will pitch their products or services at you? Probably not a lot of hands in the air wherever you're at, uh, but how many of you log on to Instagram or other social channels as marketers and pitch your services to others? Uh, there's a broken dichotomy. Well, oh, there's a broken dichotomy between how we use uh, social as marketers versus how we use it as users. And we need to find a way to bridge that gap if we want to see the results that we're hoping to see. And the easiest way to do that is to add value, right? Stop asking for things and start providing things. Start adding value your, to your community. Um, don't just try to sell a product or pitch a service or ask for money or ask for votes or whatever it is you're doing with social. Um, instead, add value your, to your community because then 
you've built something where people will be excited to be part of it. Um, so I say that as sort of like the catch-all of what we're talking about today is like in that context. And yeah. from there, whoa, uh, Andy, I don't know if you can you mute can't everybody. Get the thing working. Andy, yep. Is, yep. is it possible to just yeah. mute everyone? Thanks. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know who that is. That was not my soundtrack. Uh, so in that context, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in uh, with ten very specific tips um, that and things you could be doing to get more out of your social. So the first one is analytics. You should regularly be checking your analytics on your Instagram and any channel you're using, but. Instagram is no exception. So to find your analytics, very simply, go to your profile and go to that thing called the hamburger menu because it looks like a hamburger. Click that and you will find something called insights, meta calls, analytics. Oh, hang on, Josh. I tried to mute everybody and I muted you as well. I'm sorry. Hang on a second here. Sorry, folks. Oh, Josh, I think you should have the option just to unmute yourself. I apologize. Well, okay. There we um, go. You're back. Sorry okay, about cool. that. <laughs> no, it's okay. I couldn't do it with... Um, while I was sharing my screen, it wouldn't show me my mouse. So we'll go backwards, sorry uh, for any confusion, y'all. So um, yeah, so the first uh, way and all, um, pretty much all social media platforms at this point have analytics, uh, Instagram is no exception. So the first step to stepping up your Instagram is to check your analytics. So to find your analytics on Instagram, start by going to the hamburger menu in the top right corner. It's called that because it looks like a hamburger. Um, and you'll see a drop down menu. And from there you click insights. That's what Meta calls analytics. That's true of both Facebook and Insta. Click your insights. And from there you have a bunch of information. So you can uh, filter by the last seven days, the last year, certain custom timeframes. And from there you can see how many accounts you reached, how many accounts you engaged, which were your top posts by reach, which were your top posts by engagement, which were your top post by video views, all kinds of different things. You can even see stories. Even, and we'll talk about stories in a bit. So if you're not familiar, that's okay. Uh, but even um, with stories, um, they'll actually show your analytics even after they have expired and are no longer on your page. Um, and then there's some like top level stuff, like how you're doing this month compared to the past and things like that. So I always like to say that analytics um, are where your audience are talking to you. So I do not know what good content is for you and your brand, but your audience does. And analytics is how they're telling you. Um, there is no answers in analytics. There's questions. So analytics do not answer the question. They ask the question, why did this post do well? And then it's up to you to figure it out. If you own a bookstore and there's a cat in your bookstore and every time you post a picture of your cat, it blows up. Well, guess what? Your audience is telling you that they like your bookstore. They love your cat, the cat that lives in your bookstore. So lean in accordingly. Doesn't mean it has to be in every post, but like, figure out what your audience likes. And likewise, um, does your does your audience like to see posts early in the morning, late at night, something else? Um, learn from that. Try to pay attention to which posts are doing well. And then again, look for those common denominators that let you know why it did well. Uh, I've learned all kinds of things from accounts um, analytics over the years um, and things that surprise me greatly. Things that you, know, you take for granted that like, an amazing professionally done graphic is going to do great. You know what? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes like decent iPhone photography outperforms graphics. I say sometimes because it's account by account. It changes all the time. Uh, so it's really up to you to figure out what's working and what's not for your brand. And the way you do that is in your analytics. So that is tip number one, analytics. With that, we will jump into reels. So there's kind of like a joke uh, in the social media digital marketing space. Facebook never saw a platform they didn't want to own or clone. So stories, which we'll talk about in a bit, are uh, Facebook's response to Snapchat. Reels are Facebook's response to TikTok. So if you were confused why Reels have taken over your feed or keep hearing the name but don't know what they are, that's what they are. So Reels um, are a shiny object, just like anything else that's new and everybody's talking about. And I am a big advocate to brands that you should be aware of shiny objects because it's very easy to get lost working hard to figure out a strategy for be real, if you've heard of that platform or whatever. Uh, you know, every time you hear about a new thing, if you start chasing that new thing, you will wind up deviating from what's working for you. And that's a problem. And that's like not necessarily something you want to do. But some shiny objects hold real opportunities. And Meta in particular, and when I say Meta, that's the name of Facebook, like that's their new parent company name. So Meta in particular 
um, is very good at rewarding the behavior that it wants to see. So a couple years ago, they were desperate for live video. And the way that they rewarded you for going live uh, on Facebook was use. And they are doing that today with Reels. They really want you to post Reels. And so uh, in exchange for you posting them, they're saying, you post the Reels, we will show them to a ton of people. So there is a real opportunity to reach an audience. Nine out of 10 uh, users watch video on Instagram at least weekly. And a ton of that traffic is happening on Reels. Now I say a ton of it. It's complicated because Instagram doesn't even know how to handle Reels anymore. They've turned all videos into Reels, even though not all videos follow the same category. It's a little confusing, but like essentially Reels that are intended to be Reels, meaning that they're shot vertically, they're like made for the phone, um, that kind of stuff um, where they're shared publicly. Um, those have, a, those have a tendency to break beyond your audience. And that's the whole point. You're no longer showing them just to your audience. You're also showing them to the wider, larger uh, Instagram community um, through their discovery engine. So there, again, the TikTok concept where you could have zero followers and still go viral if the content is good because TikTok doesn't care how many followers you have. That's what Reels is doing as well. So to create a reel uh, or to find reels uh, where the button used to be to create a post, now you'll notice there's this new thing that looks like a director's cut uh, icon and you click that and now you can see reels. Now these are just photos to keep my um, deck kind of like moving, um, but these are reels and you'll notice this reel from um, this person has over 9,000 likes and 42 comments. Uh, here's one uh, from the world of engineering with 263,000 likes. Uh, here's one from the uh, sneaker prof who's like literally a professor who talks about her school, uh, 250 likes. Now for some accounts, that's not very big. For a lot, that would be massive. And this is a very simple reel. Again, I, I just kind of like I'm showing it to you as opposed to like letting you watch it. Uh, but go scroll through reels and you can kind of see this on your own. Um, Sierra Club, you'll notice you can scroll through and see exactly how many accounts like saw each reel, those numbers. Notice there's 44.4 thousand on one, uh, 12.7 thousand. The one on the bottom right has a over 90,000 views. Those numbers are shiny objects that might just be worth chasing. Um, so it's up to you if you're comfortable on video, uh, it's easy. If you're not comfortable on video, it's more complicated, but there are ways to go, you know, to do reels where you're not on screen. Uh, but if you can add value to the feed through reels, there's a real opportunity to reach a larger audience. Happy to talk more about reels during the Q&A, but definitely want to keep us moving. So that's reels uh, moving on. Story highlights. So I mentioned earlier stories. Stories are ephemeral content. They disappear after 24 hours um, and they show up in the very top of your feed. So you've got your news feed and above that, you got those little circles. Those are called stories. Um, you see stories from accounts you follow. Uh, you know, th that's what's in your feed as opposed to reels that you'll see it like publicly. Um, and st uh, stories disappear after 24 hours, which is the most important part. But Instagram realized that they were missing an opportunity to let people keep those stories around long term. So they created what they call story highlights. So once you've created a story, head to this little button here and click highlight. And from there, you can add it into your highlights. Now, what's cool about the highlight is the there's a couple cool things, but the coolest thing about the highlight is look at how simple my Instagram profile is. I've literally got my name, my follower account, how many posts I did, a short, short bio and a link, right? And that's it. Like you get very little to play with. It's not like Facebook or LinkedIn where you can really tell a story, but suddenly highlights let you take more real estate to tell the story you want to tell as opposed to just like, what's your first post, right? Um, so instead of jumping right into your next post, you can actually take up some extra real estate and use these reels, uh, excuse me, highlights. <laughs> I've got reels on the mind. So um, what's cool, you can um, edit highlights. Um, you can add um, a cover photo. So you'll notice I have those branded cover photos for mine. So here's one like in the world. Um, so you can take advantage of that. And then you can add any public story that you've shared can go in like any story you've shared, you can add into your highlight and it, it and essentially literally is like extending your reach. Um, so the examples I like to use is like, let's say you're a restaurant and you wanna show off your food. Um, maybe you have a highlight just for your soups. Maybe you have one just for your drinks. Maybe you have one just for your entrees. Like there's a real opportunity to like dig deeper. And I'm gonna show you a couple examples, but real quick, I just wanna clarify that um, you do not get to decide the order they show up in. They will show up whichever one you added to most recently. So don't get too creative trying to think like first, second, third, because they'll just like rearrange. 
um, but do think about them in categories. So here's Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ben and Jerry's went with their values. Essentially, they've got flavors, values, fun, and recipes, right? So like they extended their timeline to show you like, okay, flavors, that's obvious, but like they're also a value-driven company and they're talking about that, showing you them having fun and then recommending recipes. Here's Sierra Club again, digging into like things that they matter. Then you'll notice that third one, it says bright future dot, dot, dot. The name of your um, of your highlight can be longer than it will show. So plan accordingly. Don't put anything too important that you're not going to be able to, to see. Um, I'm showing this one because I really like the way that they just used their brand colors for this. I don't think that would work for every brand, but the United Way is you know a pretty well-known brand with some pretty powerful colors. So instead of having like an icon or an avatar or a photo, they just went with their brand colors. And I thought that was kind of cool. But United Way was able to eke out a, a, a big old, I mean, a, a whole other third of the page as a way to show you uh, what they've been working on, what they're excited about. So take, uh, don't sleep on story highlights. Um, albums, so tip four, albums, which are um, like essentially they're carousels, but Instagram calls them albums. So they actually have the highest engagement rate of all post types, but only account for 19% of content. So there's a real opportunity with carousels to like break through the feed because people like carousels, they swipe through. So an album or a carousel is any uh, post that you can swipe through and you can do up to 10 posts, uh, 10, 10 pieces of media all in one spot, like swipe through. So ways to use them, tell a story, like instead of having one photo, you can have 10 photos and you can like go way deeper into something than you could with a single photo. Teach people how to do something. You could literally do like a step-by-step -step instruction to something. Go behind the scenes, like show us around, take us to the factory, take us to the kitchen, teach us what's going on. Uh, round up and share user-generated content. So if your audience loves you, go ahead and find content from them and drop it into um, a carousel. It can be kind of cool. Share a tweet thread. So I'll show you an example of that. Like I did a tweet thread, but you can also find tweet threads from influencers or people in the industry and share those. So I'll show you some examples of um, albums. So here's one, uh, Eat Do, which I don't know this brand, but I just liked this. I thought it was a clever, like they're selling cookies, swipe for a fortune. Obviously fortune cookie plays well. You swipe and bang, there's your fortune. Very basic only two photos it's not like they went you know all in on this but like it's exactly what it needed to be they didn't add fluff like here it is cookies fortune here's what i did i read this book uh called contagion i told a story from it that i thought was particularly interesting on twitter i then turned around and turned it into a instagram carousel like just like very simple uh told the full story in a single post so yellow politics is a really cool account they focus specifically on what um politics looks like it's kind of a cool angle like it's not about um it's like literally about like branding and like how people are approaching things from like a brand design approach um so first of all like uh, this post is literally showing different um uh, um, social media channels and like tech companies and how their logo has changed over time so here is instagram's logos over time twitter's facebook snapchat youtube Netflix, and finally Amazon. Just like cool, like could he have shared these as like seven or eight different posts? Sure, but it kind of made sense to like round those all up into a single carousel. Uh, here's one that I really like. This guy posts about posting. There's a lot of people out there. If you get into that rabbit hole, you can find a lot of folks who share content about sharing content. Um, but this post I really like, and this is a template. I've seen him use this exact template more than once, but it is a Dang good template, so I wanted to share it with you. So this guy's name is Next Level Faiz, or uh, Faiz, yep. Um, so this is the first post, and you'll notice um, he has like a call to action to swipe. So as you swipe, you see the second post. And as you swipe further, you see more. Now I will flag for you, you see those white lines in between them? I added that. As you were swiping through, there is, I, I added that so you could see clear as day where one starts and the next one ends. But you can see he actually designed a single image and broke it up into 10 pieces and shared it as a carousel. And it's a really powerful idea. Like you could see that once you start uh, scrolling, you're gonna wanna get to the end because it, it's not just like 10 random things, which can be great too. Uh, he took a single photo or a single image and turned it into like uh, one long carousel. So you could definitely do something like that really easily in Canva or Photoshop. Um, just figure out what the dimensions are based on how many posts you wanna do, break it up accordingly, bang. And you got yourself a single image that people can scroll through to see. Some tips for albums include a call to action. Um, Instagram does give indications that uh, you're looking at a carousel when you're looking at it. Like there's little dots underneath it and actually numbers in the top right corner. But in my experience, a lot of folks don't know that that exists and they'll miss it. So if you want people to keep scrolling, 
tell them to like have a call to action, like swipe through to see, or, you know, like let people know even numbers, text, um, arrows, all of that could be a helpful way to like drive people to the next slide. Experiment mixing images and videos. A really cool thing um, about carousels is you can have 10 pieces of media and I'm intentionally vague on that because you can actually mix and match photos and videos. So you could literally do three photos and then a video and then two more photos and then another video if you like wanted to tell a story that way. Uh, for analytic purposes, uh, it's best to use two or three slides or go for all 10. It's not like a massive difference, but it is pretty interesting. Social Insider um, found that um, 10, um, 10 images outperforms everything else on an engagement. Two and three are also very solid. But again, if your story is seven, don't, uh, don't fluff it up, uh, but just something to keep in mind. So that's it for um, albums and carousels. Uh, want to just keep flying through these ton more to cover and like I said definitely time for questions at the end um, but yeah if you're not already taking advantage of albums definitely something to explore so um, we talked about stories uh, stories have these built-in sticker library and there's a bunch of options in there and if you haven't really played around in there you might be missing some opportunities to like to find some cool stuff. So first of all, there's a bunch of engagement stickers that can be really helpful way to engage your audience. Now I will give the big old caveat that nothing here, nothing is magic, um, except reels occasionally, because like you can have very few followers and suddenly go viral. Um, but like this isn't gonna suddenly, if you have no engagement on your content and you start posting engagement stickers, uh, you're not gonna magically get engagement, but you can train your audience, you can build your audience. And as you do, like letting them know that you wanna hear from them can be a great way to do this. So like, I just say that as a caveat, like there's no there's no magic trick to the end of the line here, uh, but this stuff can absolutely help you like engage your audience and let them know that like you value their, their opinions. So you can post a quiz. So you can literally say like, which of these is correct? You can add a countdown clock. I see almost nobody take advantage of this and I think it's a huge missed opportunity. The countdown clock is actually a really powerful tool. I do a lot of work in politics and I use this all the time. Um, so the countdown clock, you can add that to any story um, with an end date and that end date can be three hours from now or three months from now. Um, and when you add that countdown clock, somebody can actually say they want to get a reminder, they can essentially subscribe to that countdown clock. And when that countdown clock uh, is coming to an end, it will actually give a reminder to the person, even though your story hasn't been active for two months, let's say, or two weeks or whatever. So you can actually create one today that says, hey, two more months to our annual event. Uh, don't forget to RSVP, countdown clock. And then three weeks from now, you can use the exact same countdown clock and remind folks like, hey, we're only five weeks out from our annual event. And then at one week out, you could do the same thing, drop in that countdown clock. And every time you post it, people can actually subscribe to the reminder. And if they do one day before the event, they'll get a reminder that it's that annual event that they subscribe to is tomorrow. So it's just a really cool way for Instagram to literally, there, there's no other like events on Instagram the way there is with Facebook or LinkedIn, but this is actually kind of like a magic hack to that that's not used nearly enough in my experience. I use it with quite a few of my clients, um, but I see very few people take advantage of it. So I highly recommend it. Um, take a poll. Um, you can, it's kind of like a quiz, but you can just have them click those. It's, it's a little more basic. Um, you can solicit questions. This can be a really powerful way. So what do you want to know? Or you can even just ask a question like, what do you have for breakfast this morning? And if somebody answers your question, it is not shared or asks a question, whatever. It is not shared publicly on your feed, but it will show up in your analytics platform. Like it'll show, you'll get a notification that somebody responded. Um, and then you can very easily take their question or comment and share it in another story. Um, you can do that. Um, it's anonymous. Like it won't show who asked it. So you can tag them if you want, or it can be anonymous, like depending on the context here. Um, but it can be a really cool way to say like, um, you know, what, what, you know, when is it, a, uh, what, what soup should we bring back to the menu this winter? And then you could share photos of the soups with the things people are requesting uh, to be like, okay, lentil soup, got it. And then bang, you can share a photo of your lentil soup underneath that if you're a restaurant. You know, so like there's some really cool ways to lean in on like asking people questions because that will serve exactly the same as any other kind of sticker where you can like move it around on the screen. So you can like drop something underneath it. You can do all kinds of things with it. The mention sticker is a really powerful tool. Definitely want to take advantage of it. Um, I always say that talking about someone online without tagging them is like talking them on the phone without first dialing their number. Maybe they'll see your post, probably not, right? So there's two main reasons to tag accounts that you're engaging with online. Uh, the first is uh, if when you tag someone, 
they'll get a notification that you've been tagged in a story. So you're like literally letting Dream Bank know, hey, check it out. Like I did this story about y'all because I'm a big fan and I want you to see it. So like they'll find out and that like strengthens the relationship you have with Dream Bank or with whoever. Um, but if you tag them in a, in a story, more maybe even more importantly, they have the option to turn around and share that story with their followers. So you have a real opportunity. Let's say you are posting about like an event space you're going to be at. You're hosting an event at Old Sugar. Um, you could uh, tag Old Sugar and maybe Old Sugar will turn around and share that with their followers. Suddenly your content is in front of your followers uh, feed. So you've reached a whole new audience by tagging them and bringing them in. Now I will give the caveat, don't spam people like, if you just start tagging people at random, they're going to roll their eyes at you. That's not how you build relationships, but tag your partners, tag the people that are involved. Like there's lots of ways to like think about bringing folks in and this is just a great one. Um, and if folks are tagging you in content, consider sharing it. Um, uh, Andy mentioned at the beginning of this chat that I'm the... Um, I'm on the board of Social Media Breakfast Madison. If you look at our, we, we have an event tomorrow, by the way, at uh, eight, we're going to be talking about video and everybody should come, um, smbmad.org. You can learn more and uh, sign up. Um, but like, if you look at our Instagram page throughout those events, you'll notice that almost none of that content is from us. It's almost all user-generated content because people will tag us in their stories and then we turn around and share them because like, yeah, we can create our own content, but we're more excited to see what our audience is up to and like what they're doing. So the more you're sharing content, like you're growing each other's audiences it's better like there's just like it's win-win um user generated content can be an amazing way to tell your brand story now you can treat that share like a retweet literally meaning all you do is just hit share and it'll look exactly the same as it does right here uh, just like that sticker dropped onto your feed or better yet you could treat it like a quote tweet and you can add your own content to it so you can add stickers and gifs and text and more to make it your own so just like an opportunity to like say like thanks so much for hosting or can't wait to be there you know things like that um, I recently found this cool hack that I wanted to share with you that's uh, a game changer, actually, I think, for this. Um, it used to be if you wanted to tag people, you had to use the tag sticker right in the stickers option. Uh, and that's no longer the case. So um, if you wanted to tag a bunch of people, you could essentially like line them up or you could hide them behind something else. You could have like 10 tags and then hide them behind a GIF or a sticker, but it's a little clunky. So Instagram actually added this really cool option. Once your story is live, if you want to tag folks that you didn't tag already, there's an opportunity, like you didn't lose your window the way you used to have where it was done. Uh, click those three dots and there's actually an option to add mentions. So it's kind of cool. Like let's say uh, you do a post uh, a story about today's session, but you don't tag me at Jay Lemons K uh, and you realize, oh, I should have tagged Josh and let him know that I was enjoying this session or whatever. Um, you can actually go after the fact and add a mention and I will get that notification and be able to share it just as if you had um, added the the mention sticker. Um, okay, so some other stickers that are worth knowing. Uh, there's one called the link sticker. So it used to be you had to have 10,000 followers on Instagram in order to add links to stories, but Instagram realized that that was prohibitive for a lot of folks, so they added a link sticker. Um, when you click it, you can share any URL you want. Like, so this is joshclemens.com slash Instagram, uh, which is a landing page about my Instagram training. Um, you can also select the text you want it to lay, which is kind of cool. Like, so it doesn't have to be like some long clunky URL. You can say like, click here for more. You can say whatever you want. And then that's a sticker. So just like anything else, I'm doing this because you can literally use two fingers to resize it, move it around, you can drag it around the screen. You can treat it just like any other story sticker. Um, another sticker, last story sticker I'm going to mention right now is captions. Um, this is a little less impressive than when they first rolled it out about a year ago because like more and more platforms are adding this in. Um, but the captions sticker is awesome. I highly recommend it for two reasons. Um, essentially, if you're doing video, it will create captions that are eerily accurate and give you a chance to edit them to make them right. The two reasons to do it, one, ADA, some folks can't hear and so you're missing an opportunity to engage them and two even if they can't hear they might be listening with the sound off so you're missing an opportunity to engage them so if you're going to like do a video um in stories by all means there's no downside to using that caption sticker um it's good for ada and it's good for growing your audience with those who listen with the sound off which is a decent amount of folks so caption sticker that's uh stickers you should be using um so now let's talk about how to create your own sticker because this is another cool kind of hack that you can use to uh, make your stories look very unique and interesting um so here is a photo in my photo roll like i'm just in my iphone this works as well with the droid um essentially copy the photo just like you would as if you were going to like copy it to drop it into a text message or something like that and then literally uh, go to the 
some phones, depending on your iOS or your um, operating system in Droid, will actually automatically say, would you like to drop it? But if it doesn't, open up the text feature, those the AA, um, and just paste, like hit paste on your phone, and it will just paste in what you've just copied. So you can literally paste in any images, and you could do more than one. Um, now, you'll notice that last one where it says, this is saved in an album in my phone. That little piece of paper, um, I actually have a whole album on my phone that have these like cool little backgrounds I can use if I ever want to create them for a sticker. So there's like an iMac, there's a Polaroid, there's like that little piece of paper. So it's just a really cool way to like stand out. Again, it goes back to that second question. Like, how do you break through the clutter? It's things like this that allow you to break through the clutter by just like looking different, looking interesting, like looking professional um, that will like allow it. Like everybody can post a photo, but like not everybody can post a Polaroid. And now you can by simply going online, finding a PNG file of a Polaroid and saving it to your phone into an album and bang, you can like use it. Obviously don't use anything you don't have the legal rights to, but if you use Canva or anything like that, there's like a million options out there where you can just like save that stuff into an album on your phone and it can come in handy. It can be really fun to have. So that is creating your own stickers. Um, now let's talk about sharing um, tweets and Instagram posts into stories. So um, you can add any Instagram post to your story. I say any, the caveat there is that it has to be public. So if it's like a, from a private account, you won't be able to do this. Um, but this doesn't just work for your own content. It works for everybody's content. So if I'm scrolling through and I see a dream bank post and I love it, I'm like, that's awesome. I can click that paper airplane and I'll get the option to add it to my story. And if the photo's part of, um, and then I, it will share it in. If the photo's part of an album, you can only add a single image. So just a note. And if it's a video, it'll only share up to 15 seconds in the video. So if it's like a 60 second video, you can still share it, but it'll only let you share part of it. But that's okay because folks can click through to watch the rest. Um, so let's talk about how. So once you've dropped it in, again, it functions just like a sticker. You can move it around. You can resize it, all that fun stuff. Um, tap the actual post um, and it will change the formatting to an image that includes the handle and part of the post's original text. So if you're sharing something from yourself, doesn't need a lot of context, you might not need to do that. But if you're sharing something from somebody else and you want to make sure, like give them credit, really shout them out. You can just post, touch that once, that sticker, and it will flip it from just being the photo with the handle to like actually looking like a, a post right in the feed. So kind of cool. Um, and then once you've done that, you can add a call to action tap here. Uh, now you don't have to do this, but you can because there's a cool functionality that a lot of people are not aware of. When somebody clicks that tap here, they will get an option to uh, visit the original post. Now here's the thing. They already had that option because anytime somebody shares a post into a story, if you click the, the story, it'll automatically give you the option to visit the post. But a lot of people don't know that. So you're missing an opportunity to send them back to watch the full video, check out the full album, see the original post. So this is a great way to get like, to, to engage a second audience around the same content. Like let folks know like, hey, post it, post it here. Now I highly recommend you don't share every single post into your stories because that can be like overkill. Uh, but for sure you can add, you know, like the important ones or, you know, pick and choose which ones matter for you. So that's how to add any Instagram post to your story. And then uh, it's actually the drama of social media is fun. Like apparently the head of product of Instagram and uh, Twitter sat down for dinner a few months ago and decided to end their beef over how easy it should be to share a tweet to an Instagram post. It was literally over dinner. Like this was a public conversation that was shared. Um, so it used to be you'd have to like take a screenshot and go share it into your story, which is what like lots of accounts do, but that's no longer the case. Now you click that arrow, which is how you would share that tweet to anywhere else. Like uh, you could copy the link, you could share it um, by text message, but you'll notice you can also um, share it to your Instagram stories. So it's just a really cool, simple way. You Two buttons and bang, it jumps you into your Instagram. Um, so I just... I took the tweet, I said share to Instagram stories and I did it. And then just like everything else, I can share it just as a post or I can add stuff to it. So I'm just showing you like, um, I added some stickers to it, you know, super simple, but you can like beef up um, how it works. Um, so it's a really cool way. Um, and I will clarify, you can share your own tweets or any other public tweet. So if you see a tweet of a brand you really like and you think your audience will really like it, that is a great way to add value. Stop pitching, start adding value. Um, content curation, where you go out and find content you think your audience will like and share it with them, can be an amazing way to grow an audience. You can only post so many things into your Instagram feed, but you can post a whole lot of stuff in your Instagram stories. So, you know, maybe you share once, twice, five times a day, um, whatever, but you can share dozens of stories a week easily. And if it's like well curated content, your audience might love that. And it's a great way to like grow an audience. So it's definitely something to think about. So 
uh, at this point in this session, I always like to say, if you've learned nothing new, which I hope isn't the case, uh, but A, you and I should get a, a cup of coffee because that's awesome if you do everything I just covered. But I am almost confident that nobody here has ever heard of Instagram guides simply because I've been doing this a long time and I've yet to find anybody else who's ever heard of this tool. Uh, but it's actually a really cool tool. So I'd be remiss not to share it with you. So we're going to talk about Instagram guides. So guides allow you to create compilations of content, both yours or others. So to find guides, you go to your homepage, uh, not the home button at the bottom, but your profile on the right, and you click that plus button. Sorry, this is how you create a guide. Uh, click that plus button, and you'll notice there's a bunch of different types of content you can create. You could put a, a post, a reel, a story, and one of the options is called a guide. So an Instagram guide, there's three kinds, and I'll kind of I'll show you an example of what they are. But essentially, they let you pull content together into a single place. It's almost like a blog post with right within Instagram. It's really cool. So there's three kinds you could create places. You could search Dream Bank and go to and like you could create a places guide and you could search Dream Bank or Madison or America or the Eiffel Tower or anywhere in the world and you could literally find content that tag those places and pull together your favorite. So like here's ten photos that sum up how I feel about Dream Bank and it's 10 smiling people at Dream Bank sessions over the years. So like uh, places, really cool. Products. So if you have a shop or if you care about other people's shops, you can actually search through shops and add content. So if you're in the e-commerce space, there's a real opportunity here, like round up all the winter jacket gear, round up all the whatever, and you can create guides, like literally a guide of all of the content. And again, it doesn't just have to be yours. Maybe you're a nonprofit and you're promoting a trip to South America in winter and you want to promote it, go and find winter stuff that other people can wear that from cool companies that you know, like support your mission. Like maybe you share like Patagonia stuff um, and it can be a really cool way to like round up other people's stuff. But the one that I think you'll probably use the most and certainly that I've enjoyed the most is the posts one. So again, there's three options, places, products, and posts. Posts are the ones that you uh, will likely use the most. So you can curate any of your own posts as well as any post you have saved. So any post on Instagram, anything on Instagram, you can save it. And once you've saved it, you can include those in your um, guides as well as your own. So here is right when post uh, guides rolled out, I created one immediately because that's the kind of nerd that I am. Uh, I see a new tool and I'm like, oh, I got to learn how to use that. So I am obsessed with the Wisconsin Capitol. I love um, taking pictures of it, seeing it. I just, I, you know, it's just like an amazing building and I never get tired of it. So I pulled together a reel with some of my favorite pictures that I had shared over the years of the Wisconsin Capitol. And so you'll notice I get a header image. I get uh, a title, like literally an H1 title. I get copy at the bottom. And then as I click through, like as you scroll through, you can see like lots of photos that I took of the Wisconsin Capitol. This isn't even all of them uh, in that guide, but you could see that like, let's say you're a nonprofit and you're raising money to go to South America to plant trees. Uh, maybe at the end, you pull together a user-generated guide of all the great like posts that your uh, community shared. And then you could take a single link and share that to your donors or to your email list. So instead of having to be like, go check out our Instagram or look, go on the hashtag and look for this, you can literally create a like URL that you could share directly to anything. And when they open it up, it'll just take them directly into the guide and they can scroll through and see it. So the thing about guides is they're not all that useful in app. Like people aren't going to find them. What they're really cool for is sharing things outside the app. So like you can curate something and then share it elsewhere. So again, it's almost like creating a blog post, but the blog post lives right in Instagram. Uh, so it's really easy to use, really easy to scroll, and just like a really fun option. When these first rolled out, I put together a blog post, um, just like walking through how to use um, guides. Uh, so it literally like reiterates what I just said, but also shows like screenshots of how to do all this. Head to bit.ly slash rev um, IG guides. That's short for obviously reverbal communication Instagram guides. Um, and you can find a blog post just like walking you through how to do all this stuff. So uh, if, if that was not clear enough, or if you're just like looking to like, you know, to do it and you want to like see step-by-step -step instructions, head there and I will uh, happily provide them. Okay, so um, I'm gonna share some tools that you may have heard of, may have not, but like all of these could potentially help you with your Instagram. So they're all like worth knowing. So first of all, this is not an outside tool. This is Facebook's um, Creator Studio. So if you go to facebook.com slash Creator Studio, um, Creator Studio is where you can post and schedule content uh, on your desktop for both Facebook and Instagram. So if you didn't know that, Instagram a while back rolled out an option that you can actually post directly from your desktop, which a lot of folks were very excited about. 
And more importantly, you can schedule content right from your desktop. So you no longer have to like go in at exactly the right time to share it. You can post for the week right in there. Um, so once you go in there, you can create posts and then you have the option to share your Instagram uh, post and then you can either publish it or hit schedule. Um, and then I will just flag, I personally use a third-party tool for all my content scheduling that I love. It's called Publer. I wrote a blog post with 10 reasons why I like it, including um, how to's of a to use a bunch of them. So again, Creator Studio is great, but I'll just, I'd be remiss not to share that I don't use Creator Studio because I find it to be a bit clunky. Uh, I use something called Publer. So joshclemens.com slash blog slash Publer. It is free to use if you're using up to like three accounts, I think. And then there's like some fees involved. It's like a Hootsuite or a buffer, but I'll give you 10 reasons why I prefer it to their competitors. So check that out if it's so interesting to you. Um, Third-party tools, one of my favorites, and I know a ton of orgs that like the second I tell them about this, they get obsessed with it. Um, so it's called Remix. Um, search in the app store. It's, it's a mobile app. Uh, in your iPhone store, in the Apple or Google store for Remix, RMX Remix. Um, and literally it lets you take any URL of any tweet, drop it in there, pick your background color, and it just spits out this image. So instead of having to, I mean, you could create this yourself in Canva and Photoshop, whatever, in like a minute, right? It's not hard, but in Remix, you can do it in 10 seconds and you don't have to have access to Photoshop or Canva. You don't have to do anything. You literally just take the URL, drop it into um, the platform, um, the free tool, um, and uh, set your background color. It'll remember your background colors. So you don't have to keep switching to it. Um, if you've got more than one brand, you'll have to switch back and forth. Uh, here's a little hack that you should know, but might not. I work in politics and I can tell you without a doubt that screenshots of tweets are one of the top performing pieces of content on both Facebook and Instagram. I don't know why, it makes no sense to me, um, but I am telling you without a doubt, uh, when I run political campaigns, when I post uh, screenshots of tweets, they regularly are some of our top performing content. So consider if that's helpful for you. Um, and again, you can do this. Now, earlier we talked about sharing a tweet right to your story. This is for sharing a tweet right to your feed. So it's very different. You wouldn't do this for your stories because there's no reason, but this is great for sharing it to your feed. So just something to think about. Um, and bear in mind, you don't have to only share your own tweets. Um, you can go share tweets from people in your industry. That Again, that content curation opportunity uh, is immense right there. So some more third-party tools, obviously Photoshop. You know, If you're using them, you can do anything. Uh, Spark is like uh, Adobe tool that's very powerful. Canva keeps getting better. If you haven't used it yet, uh, I highly recommend checking it out if you're not a Photoshop expert. Um, InShot is a really cool app um, that lets you do some cool editing for both photos and videos. And uh, CapCut is a um, specifically for video. Uh, it's owned by ByteDance, the same people who own um, um, TikTok. And I can tell you it is very powerful. Um, and they just rolled out a desktop version. So I've actually been editing videos on there. It's like iMovie, if you've ever used that, but a little bit easier to use and more powerful. Uh, it's it's a pretty unbelievable tool. You can actually pull in trending sounds from uh, TikTok and there's like a lot of cool things you can do, but it's a really powerful tool. So all of these are free or have a free component except for Photoshop, which is like its own world. Um, but I'm just throwing that out there. Here are a couple more free tools that also of course have paid options, but all of these are free. Every tool I share is always free or I will make very, very very clear it's not. Um, so there's one called Over, just has like really cool templates like built for Instagram stories and things like that. Another one called Infold, same idea. You can like take your photo and put it into these cool like kind of like templated backgrounds, just like a really cool way to make your stuff pop. One other that I've played with over the years, it's pretty cool, In Stories. They have like these really cool, easy to use, uh, like moving um moving like it, you can see how this is going to make your content pop right like posting the photos fine doing this better um and all of those are free so definitely check those out if that's interesting to you or you're so inclined um so we're up to tack uh to hack number 10 and this is a bizarre one um uh, just kind of preface that uh but i will also say that i have done it and seen it work so it is bizarre i don't know why it works i don't know how this guy figured it out uh, but I'd be remiss not to share it with you. So the guy I'm going to share this hack from, uh, his name is the Stephen Miller, or his name's Steve Miller, but his handle's the Stephen Miller. And he's just one of those people who like posts about posting and he's really good at it. He's just like a really good content creator's creator. Um, so if you're looking for um, advice or tips, like he's a great guy to check out. So integrated Instagram hack, let your stories expire. So you can't have any active stories. And then once they've been expired overnight, essentially the next morning at 9 a.m. your time, <laughs> post a series of questions, poll or quiz stickers. Um, I did this a couple of times and it was the best performing post uh, stories I ever had. 
why i have no idea um like i said i don't know how he figured this out but there it is um i'm not guaranteeing it'll work every time but i have seen that it works um and if you see success with that or find it doesn't work i'd love to hear about it from you like i'm always looking to like update this stuff so if that hack no longer works let me know but um i have found it to work so i'm sharing it with you um that is my 10 tips so i want to keep in touch and then i'm going to take questions but i'm just going to share a few ways y'all can keep in touch with me so first of all i have a mailing list um no spam ever uh connect with me joshclemens.com slash prez uh and just because this was such a fun topic and i'm such a fan of it um i will raffle off a free 30 minute um um consultation with me to somebody who signs up for my list today so we can talk about Instagram or anything else you want, digital ads, uh, blogging, email, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. I'm, you know, I live in all those spaces. Um, so if you sign up for my mailing list today, uh, I will pick one person off that list randomly and uh, give you a free 30 minute consultation to talk about your digital program, if that's helpful to you. Um, you can check out my blog post, Evolution of Instagram. Uh, a little while back, I wrote up just kind of like how Instagram has changed over the years. Um, so you can find that at joshclements.com slash blog slash evolution of Instagram. Andy mentioned this at the top, but I have a podcast. Uh, it's called Step Up Your Social. All the episodes are short, 10 minutes or less. And everyone takes a, um, provides a quick actionable tip to help you take your digital marketing to the next level. So short, sweet, to the point. Uh, you can listen to every episode at stepupyoursocial.com or wherever you stream podcasts. Um, sometime post-November, because I mentioned I work in politics, I will be launching a new newsletter called Free Digital Tools. Every two weeks, I will be sharing two free digital tools that I like that I think you might enjoy. Uh, you can subscribe to that at freetools.digital. Um, you can also find me on TikTok. I have a TikTok channel, freetools.digital. That's my handle, um, where I've already started sharing some stuff. So if you want to check that out, you can do that now. Um, here are all the many ways you can keep in touch with me. Um, I am very active online and always engage. Um, at J Lemons K on Twitter um, um, and Instagram. And then, yeah, free tools digital if you want to check out that um, TikTok account. Um, so, yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned some new things. And now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and take some questions if there are any. Um, where are we? Absolutely. We have a handful of questions here, Josh. So, I will go ahead and start at the top. Uh, first one from uh, Andrea. Did do you ever create content on Instagram that you shared to other social platforms? Yes. Um, I. Uh, it depends. I mean, the short answer is it depends, right? But essentially, when Instagram Stories first rolled out, it was one of my favorite on the go kind of like photo editing tools because you could do all these cool things. You could like. I could create something in Instagram stories and then turn around and um, like add in, um, you know, like a moving GIF or something like that. And then you don't even have to post the story. You can literally just download it to your phone and share it, or you can post it. Um, I guess I don't create, I will definitely share the same piece of content to Instagram as other platforms. But as far as creating it in Instagram, I mean, if I'm going to edit the post, sometimes I'll do it in there. Uh, one tool I didn't mention that's another cool one. If you're looking to like really take your editing to the next level, check out Snapseed. It's another cool, like if you're just looking to like edit your photos, um, it's a cool free tool um, that'll let you edit it. So like I might like edit it in there before I drop it in all those places. But yeah, I will sometimes share stuff from there, but I would say I share tweets to other places more than Instagram posts to other places. <laughs> Wait, you're muted, Andy. Can't hear you. How many years have you been doing, doing Zoom now? And I feel I still I still get the the, the mute monster. Hear, How do you create and save stickers that are then available in the Instagram library? So you could share that. Oh, that's more complicated. Um, you have to do that through Jiffy and you have to be like an agency level. Um, you can't just go in there and do it yourself. It is possible to do, but you need to have like an agency account essentially. Um, so if you're trying to do it like, Google around about doing it, but that is the answer. It has to be, you add it into the Jiffy library, but you can, anybody can add something to the Jiffy library. It won't automatically be added into the stories library for um, stickers library. You have to like have like an agency level account. Uh, I happen to know there's somebody on this call. I think she still works there. Megan at Subtle Strauss. They made ours for social media breakfast. So if you go on to, um, shout out to Megan. Um, if you go on to, uh, um, <laughs> the stories library and search in the GIF library for hashtag SMB mad social media breakfast Madison. Um, you'll find like a whole bunch of really cool GIF stickers that were created by subtle stress. So agencies can do it. Individuals cannot. Is there a good place to learn about current, the current algorithms? Like how did you know reels were getting the priority? 
uh, is um, that's used, and, or do you learn about them through trial and error? Yes and yes. So I follow a ton of content, both like people like Steve Miller. I'm on like Facebook groups. I'm on mailing lists. Uh, I, I am a huge part of my job is keeping up with all of this stuff. I do try to share it all uh, as I learn it. So if this was helpful to you and you want to, you know, like let me curate that stuff for you, follow me on uh, LinkedIn in particular. I share a lot of stuff, but also Twitter. Um, and I am always trying to share like updates to the field. Um, but I will say more than anything, like using the platforms, I, I'm a big advocate. You, you'll never do well on a platform. You don't spend time in yourself. Like you can't go into Instagram to post a story, never go back and expect it to do well because you don't know what's working. So like the best way to learn the language and see what's working and see what's happening is to like spend time in there. And I'm not saying you gotta be, you know, uh, spending three hours a day scrolling through TikToks or reels to like be an expert, but you can't like never go in there and do it. Um, but there are absolutely ways. Social media explorer, social media insider. There's like a bunch of blogs and stuff. Uh, Matt Navarro runs an incredibly powerful weekly newsletter called the social media geek out. Um, it is not for the faint of heart. Like it, you know, if you actually like read through the whole thing, it would take over an hour. Uh, you could just scroll through it as quickly as you want, but it's like a beast. And he just rounds up all the latest, everything. Um, so that's like an intense way to do it, but I read it every week pretty much, or at least scroll through it. Um, but yeah, um, finding podcasts, um, that you like, you know, but, uh, social media examiner, you know, go to social media examiner twice a week and you'll get like the gist of it. Spending time on the platform, you'll get the gist of it for sure. Follow me on LinkedIn. You'll get the gist of it. <laughs> uh, question about the slides. Is there a place that people could access them or reference them? Uh, email me and I will share, uh, I'll share some stuff with you. Okay. Uh, next question would love to learn to love to know more about hashtags and how they affect your views. Also, how can we find out which hashtags have followers and how many? So Instagram actually will tell you when you start typing a hashtag, how many times it's been used. So it's kind of cool. Um, so if you're using like hashtag Wisconsin versus hashtag Madison, you can see like how many times each were used. Um, the long and short of it is hashtags are not nearly as powerful on Instagram today as they were two years ago, um, but that doesn't mean they're irrelevant. So, you know, it's okay to use some. Uh, the main place that they are still relevant, I think, and we'll see, this is like an ever moving needle. They are definitely relevant on TikTok right now um, to help TikTok understand what your content is. And I think that they're still relevant on Reels, although we'll see. Um, so hashtags are very poorly misunderstood, right? Like they're a really complicated tool. So I essentially tell people they, with the exception of TikTok, uh, excuse me, of Reels, there's two times that I would recommend using a, um, a hashtag. One is to kind of like be funny or whatnot. Like, you know, you can use it kind of ironically or like to just like chime in on something. And the other is to clarify your part of a conversation. So I wouldn't say like hashtag Monday, but like hashtag Monday inspiration, because that's like a larger thing that like people talk about, like chiming in on that hashtag World Cup, like make clear, like you're, you're sharing content about the World Cup, but just like sharing like every, you know, again, you could share up to 30 hashtags in a single Instagram post, but you do not need to, it will not help you reach. The other big thing is um, testing, like check your analytics, use the same hashtag for a week or two, uh, or same four or five hashtags for a week or two, and literally see how they're doing. Uh, and if you're seeing success with them over like your previous content, great. If not, like try some new ones. But there was a time um, two years ago, if you had the right hashtags, you would get a ton of views. Those days are just over. Like with the exception of reels, you're not going to magically see like massive reach because you, you found the perfect hashtag to use. Next question is asking about this event. Um, and if, where can people rewatch it and see it again? So this event is being recorded and will be housed on our YouTube page going and putting that in the, uh, the chat right there. So that's a good concise list of many of our events that we have uh, previously recorded going back to the end of March, 2020. So that's a good, good concise list for all of our previous events, or at least a lot of our previous events um, that are, are, uh, are, are housed online or will record it. Um, next question that came and I'll, in. I'll flag there's a few uh, sessions of mine in there if you wanted if this yes. if this wasn't enough of me for you uh, head over there and you can watch one more I actually did one a year or two ago just on stories so yep. we covered a couple of the same ones because they're relevant enough uh, but I actually did 10 tips specific to stories you can go check that out sure um, sure and then yeah. someone had a question about an event that you mentioned uh, tomorrow I am posting the link. So head to smbmad.org. Uh, and I see one of my fellow board members uh, shouting out the guide tip, Faith, hey. Um, so um, Social Media Breakfast Madison is a local nonprofit. I'm the board president. We are a volunteer driven organization, sponsor supported. Three Bank is a very important sponsor. And um, 
Uh, we are a volunteer-driven, sponsor-supported org. Uh, we host free monthly events. Uh, the third Wednesday of every month, uh, we have a free session with either a speaker or a panel or something. Um, and it's always at 8 a.m. on the third Wednesday of the month. Um, and you can learn more about us as an organization. You can get involved. There's lots of ways to get involved. And you can RSVP for events um, at smbmad.org, which I dropped into the comments. Um, and yeah, our event is tomorrow morning. So we would love to see you there. Um, it's a really amazing community full of people who care about this kind of stuff. Um, and he's been super active in it for years as a sponsor and as a partner. And I see a couple of familiar faces here. I shouted out a few folks that I know from Social Media Breakfast. So y'all, I'd love to see all of you there in the coming months. Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, got a few more minutes left here. If any of you have some some last minute questions, please go ahead and get them in. But I have a question for you, Josh. You know, here yeah, let's hear it. we are a community that is built of fellow fearless dreamers. And uh, I was wondering, what's uh, one piece of advice you have for someone who's actively pursuing a dream right now? Get started. Um, it is the easiest thing to wait until everything is ready. It will never always be ready. Um, and the best thing you can do is build something. Um, the building does not have to be everything. Like you're never going to be done. Um, and as, as somebody who's like been in that space, like I say this with no judgment because I've been there and everybody's been there, but it's so easy to be like, well, first I got to do the website. I got to grow the mailing list. I got to do this. I got to do that. That stuff will never be done because it's all evolving. Um, and Diane, I'll answer that question in a second. So, um, the best thing you can do is decide how you're going to spend your time to promote that thing and just start doing it. And, and not just like building it, not just promoting it, but building it. Like, um, you know, like what's the simplest website you need to like, make sure people take it seriously. How many social channels are you going to be on? And like, just start doing it. Um, it's really easy to wait until everything's ready. It'll never be ready. Like you just got to get going and build as you go. Um, uh, because otherwise you'll, you know, three years from now, you'll be in the exact same place you were today. And that's from both personal experience, like, you know, we've all been there as well as just, um, you know, working with lots of clients who like, they're working so hard on this one thing and they didn't want to talk about it until it was done. And I was like, yeah, but when it's done, nobody's going to know about it. You should have been growing a mailing list in the meantime. You should have been building a social channel, starting that podcast. Like literally I've gotten clients call me because they're like about to publish a book or launch this massive course. And I'm like, great. What's your audience? And they don't have one. So like the best thing you can do right now while you're building that dream is like growing that community that's going to be excited about that dream uh, because otherwise you work real hard for something and there's nobody there to like celebrate it with you. Um, so I hope that's that. helpful to, to that community. And uh, to Diane's question, uh, my recommendation is a minimum um, of three to five posts uh, a week and a maximum of three to five posts a day. Three to five a day on Instagram is a lot, but like if you can do three to five a week in the feed, uh, maybe one or two reels and then um, a couple stories a day would be like great. But again, like do what you can do, um, you know, and hopefully some of the tips I showed you will make it easier for you to be able to do things like you don't have to like spend an hour creating a story. You just have to scroll through Instagram or Facebook and just share that into your stories. Um, but a couple of times a week would be my recommendation if you can. Wonderful. Well, that looks to be all the questions that have come in. So we will go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you, Josh, for putting together such a wonderful presentation. Thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us here. Again, check the recording in about a week or so if you missed anything. Um, but yeah, with that being said, we will cap it there and we will see you all next time. Take care. Thank you.